All right, so hello everybody. This will be the continuation lesson that we discussed in the previous meeting. So for this session, we're going to focus on a specific instrument, a specific method that we're going to use in the lab, especially when um, we're doing chemistry or biology, biology related experiment. And this is what you call the spectrophotometry which involves the instrument called the spectrophotometer. So for this session, we are going to use a virtual simulator or an online laboratory simulator from a website called the Amrita. And then the objectives are these. We're going to measure the absorbance of a sample at different wavelengths. Find out the concentration of the unknown sample and verify the beer Lambert's law. So this instrument, the spectrophotometer, involves us to know the absorbance of a substance. So a substance can have its property, can have the property to absorb an amount of light when light passes through it, okay, at a given wavelength of light. Now, um, because of that property, we can then know what is the concentration of that sample or what concentration a sample has given a specific substance or a specific chemical. For example, you're looking for the concentration of a specific photo, a phytochemical, for example. So because of this instrument, you can use uh, such method. And this is also under or described under a law called the Vera Lambert's law, which we're going to um, study later on. Okay, so in theory, a spectrophotometer is a photometer. It measures the amount, something to do with measuring light. Okay, this time it measures the intensity of light as a function of its wavelength. So the single beam and the double beam are two major classes of, of photometers, uh, spectrophotometers. So it uses beams of light and then it passes through your substance. So linear range of absorption and spectral bandwidth measurement are important features of the spectrophotometers. So we have the single beam and the linear beam. In the single beam, um, all the light passes through the sample. And to measure the intensity of the incident or the incoming light, the sample must be removed so that all the light can pass through. This type of um, spectrometer or spectrophotometer is usually less expensive and less complicated. So we have this single beam which is simpler uh, more compact and can also have a larger dynamic range whereas we're talking about the double beam one before it reaches a sample the light is split is split into separate beams so we're just reading this now and then we're going to show you uh, in an image afterwards so the beam passes through the sample and then the second one is used for reference and uh, because of this, we can have our reading reference and the sample reading can take place at the same time. In transmission measurements, the spectrophotometer quantitatively compares the amount of light passing through the reference and the test sample, so the one that we are testing. For reflectance, it compares the amount of light reflecting from the test and reference sample. So we can um, generally use these and um, many spectrophotometers must be calibrated before they start to analyze the sample. It starts with calibrating and turning it on to zero. It's what you call the zeroing. Before you start to do this, uh, we will demonstrate this later. So the calibration is done by using the reference substance and the absorbance. absorbances of all other substances are measured relative to the reference substance. Uh, we Let us go to that. Okay, so this is the website that you are going to use. This is from Amrita, is a institute or um, an 
education institute so this very website you're going to see the instructions that i just read you that i placed in the powerpoint and this is a single beam photometer diagram so you have the light source and here the monochromator and then this is this part here is our cuvette which contains the test sample <clears throat> okay and then there further on there are photoresistors which detects a light that was able to pass through and then the amplifier and then the output which um this place where was uh, red here at this part so this is the sequence the light source shines through the monochromator the output wavelength is selected and beamed at the sample and a fraction of the monochromatic light is transmitted through the sample and to the photo detector and is displayed here okay. so we're going to um, first know about the beer lambert's law the beer lambert's law is it tells us that there is a linear relationship between the absorbance and the concentration of the absorbing sample so your sample is here and placed in a glass container called a cuvette with this spelling this one so it says that the amount of light that passed through has something has a relationship with the absorbance of the substance and the concentration of the substance so mathematically they are able to determine that and here the final um, form of that so going on as the absorbance is measured you they can tell that as it increases the concentration also increases so you pause this video first and then you watch a video that i am going to link above here okay so you're back so now let's try to do this simulator so you click here but before you can um, use the simulator you are going to log in or to sign up uh, what I did was that I logged in because I already have this account so you can use you can make yours but, uh, what I did was I logged in through my Google Okay, so successfully was able to log in. So the simulator loads a little bit. So you wait. Simulators are like simulations of the real world things. So we can have a laboratory apparatus, for instance. So this is the spectrophotometer. So as the simulator loads you click this full screen part here okay this is our screen this part is the simulator these are the controls that you can use um, here are the variables that we can change so what are you going to test and here are the results so you're going to answer you input your answer here you manually type it so first let's these are the instructions Okay, so first we do the zeroing part I mentioned to calibrate it. Um, the first one, just follow this one. So select a blank cuvette and place it in the spectrophotometer. Close the lid and then click zero on the ABS 100% T button. And the instrument now reads 0, 0.0 um, amplitude. Now, choose another solution with a known concentration and measure the absorbance between the wavelengths 350 to 700 nanometers. Record the wavelengths at the maximum absorbance value. And then we solve for this, the molar absorption coefficient using the equation this. Epsilon equals A over CL. But let's try to do this first parts first so blank covet and then press zero it becomes zero and then non concentration and then find the maximum absorbance simulator so click on the simulator again and then full screen okay 
There, here, I show three types of cuvettes that we can place. So you choose the blank first, but for you open first, okay, and then choose the blank. Just click, one click, okay. Imagine it goes inside, and then you close it. And then it tells us to press this 0 ABS 100% T. And take note that it's at 350 nanometers. This is the absorbance. Absorbance. Okay, so press. It becomes 0. Now, it's good. We're done with the zeroing. So we calibrated the instrument that it's 0 at this um, uh, wavelength. Okay, open now. Return. And then it tells us to go to the known concentration cuvette, this one. Known, okay? So click once. And then close. Okay, after you close, there's a reading, right? So it's, uh, there's a reading now at 350. So we're going to find the maximum absorbance at 350 to 700 nanometer so you just increase and then take note at which point does it increase uh, in what is the maximum part and at what point it decreases okay so just click up this arrow up it becomes 343 348 358 368 375 385 395 uh, 0 0.0410 Four three eight click click more so four ninety five six three six four five seven two eight eight hundred ten zero eight seven eight zero nine three five zero nine eight eight one zero three three one zero eight eight one one three eight one one nine three one two one two nine eight one three one three nine eight one four five seven one five zero six one five five six one five nine three one six three one one six five one one six six one one six three eight oh look it went down so you can go back to that part down one six zero one one six three eight one six six one and then 1651 okay so it seems that um, it um, in, the maximum is at 1651 or 1661 again if we increase more it becomes lower it lowers to 1518 so the maximum is one six six one so you're going to take note of that in your notebook so we can go at this part here you have another notebook add the wavelength is 510 nanometers and the absorbance maximum is zero point one six six one zero point one six six one eight so take note of that okay let's go back our four now we can sol solve the so we can have it later because you already watched the video Okay, so you first have this. Calculate the molar absorption coefficient. This coefficient, so we have now the A, the maximum absorbance between 350 to 700 nanometers, and the concentration and the length. So, we're going to, where are we going to know these values? It's at the simulator itself. It's here. So if you full screen it again, 
you can see this side we have the concentration 0.001 molar and the length of the cuvette is 1 cm so you're going to input that One cm concentration okay so you just input that one so you can solve it to get the molar absorption coefficient and the maximum absorb uh, the molar absorption coefficient a over CL. So what's the A? Zero point one six six one over um, the C. I think there are three zeros before one. 0.001 molar. Okay, so uh, to solve that one, let's first disregard the symbols and then you plug it in your calculator and then 0.1661 divided by 0.001 and then 1 times 1. Answer is 166.1. Okay, the answer is 1.661. Do not have the unit first. Okay, now we're done with the first part and then let's go to the second part. According to the procedures, next we're going to solve the determine the known concentration. So this is the formula now. To solve the concentration or the molarity of that a known concentration, that third cuvette at the cabinet above. We're going to have this A unknown over E times L. Let's copy that first. Molarity, absorbance of the unknown over this. So the E stands for this one that we solve and L is the length. So very easy. It's just that we're going to know this absorbance of the unknown. The absorbance of maximum wave at maximum wavelength and the molar absorption E. Solve this already. The L is cross section length of the cuvette, which is 1 cm. So let's now go to the absorbance of the unknown. So we're done at this part. Now let's open this. One click, one click, and then let's go to the Unknown concentration. Close. Okay. The maximum is at 510 nanometers and it tells us that it's 2.0763A. You can check that one. You can go down. Okay, that is the point where if you click down, if you click up, it will go down. So that means at 510 nanometers, that's the maximum wavelength. So just copy 2.0763A. So let's have 2.0763A. Let's check again. 0763A. And then over... This is the one that we solved here, 166.1 multiplied by the length of the covet, cross-section length, 1 cm. So you plug it in your, um, your calculator and then 2.0763, times 1. The answer is 0 0.012500 molar because it's big M. 
So that's now the concentration of our unknown substance. So for example, in the lab, we have a, an extract and we want to know the concentration of a given an extract of the concentration of that given extract. So how much of a chemical was there. So we can use this instrument to know the, the unknown concentration. So this is how we're going to solve that. So the answer that we got is 0 0.012500 molar. So let's try to see if we got it right. What you're going to do, you answer it here. So you type 0 0.0125. Because of the instruction, you're going to place only up to four decimal places. So if you're right, submit. Yes, it tells you this indicator. It's done. Correct. So we got it right. Okay, so very easy. Now I want you to have your activity there is an activity sheet that i will give you and then i want you to screenshot the final answer with this you type the at least four decimal places and it must show this correct answer indicator and then you submit it so for the rest of the time you do your activity okay and make sure you have watched that video about beer lambert's law so here is where you're going to change the variables. For example, if you're asked in your um, if you're asked in your experiment. So after you're done, you just click reset. Reset here. This is it comes back at the beginning again, and then you can change the concentration here if you're asked to do so. And then this is where you're also, you can change the solution. So click down. So what solution? At this side, the unknown concentration is the cobalt 2 fluoride. And then maybe you're asked to do something else in your activity sheet. Or you're asked to do another concentration. But the length will always be like this. We can't change it. It depends on the size of the container. Okay, this is the blank. This is the unknown. This is the unknown. So review first zero calibration. Next, find the maximum at the blank sample or the known, the I known, and then close and open again and change with the unknown. And then at that point, you're going to get the values. So just follow the instructions. Okay. Thanks for watching and continue to do the activity.